Moving on to the receiver now. Now it is receiving because you can hear the the test set, the signal generator is set to 279125. Now before we optimize that, we need to set the receiver onto frequency. Because of this three crystal mixer arrangement, it doesn't track with the 10.24, which it would do on one of the more sophisticated synthesizers. So we have to set this mixer, which is 16.50625, using CT201, which is the left-hand one of the two. Now this is going to be a problem for a lot of people. Now, having been in the business radio industry for years and years, when radios, before business radios were synthesized, they were crystal controlled. And we had to put them on frequency using a marker oscillator. And most of those IFs were 10.7 megs, later ones were 21.4. Many years ago, um, probably, probably about 1990, I bought one from a radio rally, a marker oscillator. This is a Pi one. There we go, look at that. And in this case, we're going to use the 455 kilohertz setting because you need to have you need to have the signal generator spot on the frequency which we've got. We're going to need to turn the modulation off, which I've now done. But I've turned the volume up, and now we've got to use this marker oscillator to net the frequency by subtracting the IF. Now what we do here is I have this I've just nicked a prod off the uh, off the meter to do this and we've got the IF generator now on it's set at 455 and we've got to set this for zero beat. Now just listen to what happens Especially if I can make it happen. So I'm now listening very carefully and see if I can demonstrate it using the trimmer, which is CT201. What we're doing is, is a woo noise, and we've got to get that to the lowest section. It's very difficult to, to hear, especially on a, a recording like this. And this is the this is the way it is done. So when that goes to the woo bit, we've got it. And I say I've I've set that, but I don't think it's going to come out on the video because it's very difficult to hear. Okay, moving on to the squelch. There is no preset adjustment, and these aren't the best squelch circuits in the world by a long way. One of the snags is if you turn the squelch up, it the radio is built in such a way that it reduces the RF gain. And there's a diode on the back. I think it's that one. Don't take this for gospel, there's plenty of information about this on the web and I understand that if you take that out then it doesn't track anymore with the squelch and it can improve the squelch circuit. Now Chris was saying to me that he's got one of these which has a residual background noise of S5, the meter's reading S5 uh, for no apparent reason. Well, all I can suggest is it's the correct setup as I've just shown on receive. You can look up this uh, situation with modifying the radio so that the. I'll just see if I can just quickly see what they say here. Um, remove the diode from the rear of the board, it says. Change the resistor on the rear of the board. There's a one on the back, is it for 220k? Remove link R116 and fix. 10 fit 10k resistor change C119 to a 0.47 microvolt tantalum with the positive V to pin 12. That's what it says here. There's plenty of information on the net for these kind of modifications. We don't do modifications, 
that's how this set is. The squelch works on this one, and I will now just put that on and show you. Right, so I'm going to put the signal generator to off, set the squelch to threshold, switch the signal generator back on, and as you can hear the squelch comes in as it should do. And if I fit, put the squelch to full, and now I'll switch the generator on, let's see when it comes in, because this is what the moan is about, I'm sure. It actually comes in at between 100 and 300 microvolts. So you can actually squelch out up to just over S9, which isn't too bad, unless, of course, you've got S9 of residual background noise. So a lot of squelches are coarser than this. It isn't the best squelch circuit. There are those modifications out there. But it certainly works on this particular radio that I've got on my bench here. So there we go. That concludes the ICOM ICB1050 receiver setup. And the next video we'll put it on the air and see if we can actually hear anybody, which living where we are here in the middle of nowhere is quite unlikely. We do that, I will just show you the lid, the speaker lid which I'm about to put on this radio. Can you see all the dust on that? When do you reckon that radio last worked?